Breaking news, the Australian TikTok girlies are in some drama. The face-off today is between two Aussie creators, Shelby Sherritt and Sofa Dofa. I'm wearing a silly shirt today because this drama is a little bit silly and I wanted to keep the mood light, okay? First up, we have Shelby Sherritt. She has two million followers on TikTok and is a potter. No, not that potter, this potter. And I guess technically, according to Google, she does use the term ceramist instead of potter, but I just, I had to throw that joke in there. I'm so sorry. Her TikTok has videos of her making mugs, dishes, and little trinkets using pottery molds. This is an important distinction to make now that will come up later. But basically, if you have no idea the way molds work is that you just pour liquid inside, liquid clay, I guess, into the mold, then you let it dry, then paint it, glaze it, fire it, and then she sells her pieces. And this is like, instead of like hand spinning at a wheel or making pottery in some other way. Shelby then does drops of these products on her website and sells pieces in person at art markets. I would categorize her account as an art account. She primarily shares the process of creating art and her studio. Though of course she does also do brand partnerships and falls into kind of that like influencer category as well. Next up is Sofa Dofa. Sof is an Australian lifestyle influencer with 1.2 million followers on TikTok. She primarily makes content about her life, her outfits, daily vlogs, gym videos, etc. She also has a clothing brand, All For Mimi, with swimsuits and pajamas. Her TikTok, definitely not an art account. It is just like a, an influencer account. And the final character for today is the strawberry mug. This mug was created by Shelby Sherritt as a part of the strawberry collection. She has two handles. She's very cute, but her price is causing a big stink on TikTok. More on that later. But you know what's not causing a big stink? The sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that lets you try out a new designer fragrance every month for just $17. They offer affordable and flexible subscription plans, so once you've found your signature scent, it's easy to skip or cancel at any time. I really like having a bunch of different scent options because some days I wanna go with a more clean and fresh smell, and other days I want something a little bit more fruity and fun, you know? Scentbird also carries both perfumes and colognes from designer brands like Prada, Gucci, and Versace, full price on some of these scents are $300 to $500 a bottle. Here are the fragrances they sent me to try this month. Don't ask me why I'm holding them like this. So the first one is the Avant Persian Sunset. The notes of peppercorn, berries, wood, and violet. I recently took this with me on a weekend trip to New York. And now this scent reminds me of the time I spent there. I do have to say, I think this one is my favorite one out of the three that I got this month. Next up is the Roja Elixir. This one has notes of rose, raspberry, peach, and vanilla. This one's quite a bit stronger and it feels a lot more like a spring scent to me. This one I can see myself putting on right before a first date at a farmer's market in mid-May. And last but not least this month is Joe Loves Pomelo. This one has notes of vetiver, pomelo, and patchouli. This one is definitely the fruitiest out of all of them. These three scents are also all vegan and cruelty-free. If you want to smell these for yourself, click the link below to visit Scentburbs Scent Burb, to visit Scentbird's website and use my code in the moment for 55% off your first order from Scentbird. Thank you, Scentbird. Let's get back to it. So what happened? As is often the case in dramas like these, people are very quick to take sides. I'm Team Soph, I'm Team Shelby. So let's go through what happened, then I'll let you decide if you are Team Soph or Team Shelby, or maybe a secret third option. The story begins at the Finders Keepers Market in Sydney, Australia, that took place from December 8th through 10th, 2023. This event had food, art, jewelry, accessories, candles, clothing, and of course, a lot of ceramics. Shelby was vending at this event. Tickets for entry to this event were $6, and it was a fairly popular event because it's happening before Christmas. People are going to buy their Christmas presents and support local businesses. So on one of the days, Sofa Dof went to the market. Shelby says in one of her videos that the vendors and the organizers of the event were really excited when they heard that Soph was coming to the event because there was a possibility that she would shout out the market on TikTok or any of the vendors if she bought anything from them. So they knew she was coming, they recognized her, knew who she was, and they were like, this is great. Maybe we'll get some exposure from this. We'll talk about what allegedly happened at the market in a moment, but that's all you need to know for now. At some point after the market, Soph posted an eight minute long Christmas present haul on TikTok talking about what she got while she was at the Finders Keepers Market. Basically, I was at this market, the Finder Ke Finders Keepers Market. I can't figure out what day she posted this on because it has since been deleted, but based on some comments and speculation, it seems like she posted it around the time of the market. This did happen sometime before Christmas because she mentions not being sure who she was gonna give some of the pieces to. This, I actually have no idea how I'm gonna give this to. So she has since deleted this video, but she re-uploaded the portion where she was talking about the strawberry mug that I mentioned earlier. She doesn't name the business that she bought the mug from, but she does make some comments about the cup being tiny, a sippy cup, and her surprise at the price tag. How can you use this cup, right? I think it's actually like a kid 
sippy cup, which is silly because it's ceramic, so if I drop it, it'll smash. She says when she was looking at it, she didn't notice that the mug had two handles, and she certainly didn't know how much it cost until she was checking out and tapping her card. But I didn't say that. I thought it just had one handle. I was like, oh, that's such a cute mug. Like, I'm just gonna get it. Like, I was like, whatever, like, I'll just get it. Didn't ask how much it was. She's like, oh no, she's like, it's all good, you can tap. Fucking look at the F-Boss machine, $125. Look how small this mug is. Like, it's literally tiny. She, like, fully wrapped it and put it in a bag, and, like, I was about to tap. So I was like, there's no way I can be like, no. I could have, but I would have felt really bad. It's so breakable. It's like hand serrained. It's like hand serrained. Hand ceramic, you know? Then at least a month, maybe up to two months later, depending on the timing of all of this, but like time has passed, Shelby stitches Soph's Christmas haul video with her side of the story. In Shelby's video, she starts off by thanking Soph for supporting her business. I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for supporting my small business. It means so, so much. She says that she spends hours finessing the pieces and that it always means a lot when people support her. Shelby then accuses Soph of lying about their interaction. She says it's really disappointing that Soph would critique her prices because Soph also runs a small business, her clothing brand, and knows how much goes into it. It's also deeply upsetting to have someone not only question you as a business owner and lie about how I interacted with you, but to also have you question my pricing when you too also run a small business and you know how much goes into every single little thing that small business does. The thing that's also upsetting is that you came to the finest keepers market and do you know what? We were all so excited. When I spoke to you, I actually recognized you because you'd just been nominated for a TikTok award. And I said, hey, how awesome. Congratulations on your TikTok award. I then explained to you, like I explained to every single person that came to my store over that weekend, that all the prices were placed on the bottom and you can pick up handle you don't have to purchase anything you can just enjoy my stall because I get it times are tough right now and this is where we start to see a little bit of confusion about like what actually happened at the market so Shelby in her video says that Soph walked up to the booth and was picking up pieces, like picking up a bunch of pieces. Shelby told her that the prices were on the bottom of the mug. So she was picking them up, looking at the bottom of them, putting them down. Shelby says that her and Soph talked a lot about the strawberry collection. She was recommending different pieces that she might like. I watched you pick things up and look at the prices. You picked up a number of pieces of that strawberry collection because it's freaking cute. And then I showed you other pieces that I had left. After that, you handed me the mug that you're gonna go and I was like, awesome pick. And I asked you, like I asked everyone that weekend, whether you would like tissue paper or a bit more padding because I wanted to make sure that the piece was safe wherever they were traveling to that day. She says that if Soph is unhappy with her purchase, then she can email Shelby and she'll issue her a full refund. Shelby then says that that mug is very special. The reason it has two handles is because it's considered a dignity mug, which is basically an accessible option for people who need multiple handles to hold their cup for any variety of reasons. This is why this mug has an extra loop. Each is a functional, but they look and feel just like a regular mug. Most accessible cup designs look like bigger versions of kids' sippy cups, but the people using them are grown adults who deserve the dignity of comfortable and elevated drinkware. In particular, that mug is really special because it may look like just a sippy cup to you, but it actually falls under the dignity mug category where it has a double handle to help people that that have different needs and different disabilities that require to handle mugs. Anyway, thank you um, for supporting my business regardless. Uh, and thank you to anyone that's bought one of my pieces. It, um, it means the world to me. So then a few days later, Soph responds to Shelby's video by stitching it. So they're doing like a little stitch chain. I am making this video because I am so confused. Soph's video now has 10.8 million views. In this video, she says, on my mom's life, I did not touch any of the items. On my mom's life, I did not touch any items. In Soph's video, she says that she actually never talked to Shelby. Instead, she spoke to someone with very long brunette hair. She says she has never seen Shelby in her life and isn't even sure if Shelby is the one who owns the business. This is my experience. I remember going to the finest keepers market, looking at this store and being like, this is so cute. I walk up, there was like a little like, um like barricade thing you had to like line up because the store was really popular so i stood in the line i waited i waited i waited i waited a while got to the front and i just wanted to have a look at some things i looked at all the items and i remember talking to a girl who had long dark brunette hair 
When I looked at the mug, I couldn't see that it had two handles, but I wouldn't have bought it, but I thought it had one handle. Soph makes a fairly good point and says, why would I lie about this? Why would I say that I didn't know the price if I actually did know the price? Like that just doesn't really make any sense. Why would I lie about this? Why would I make a TikTok saying that I had no idea what the price was if I knew the price? I saw that it said $125 and I thought, in my personal opinion, I thought, whoa, I didn't expect it to be that much for a little mug not saying that the price i never said anything in the video that the price wasn't worth that that it was not deserving of that price in shelby's video shelby had implied that soph was saying that the mug was not worth the price she says i never said the mug wasn't worth that i just said i was surprised when i tapped my card but if we watch her video and how she talks about it she does kind of imply that this mug isn't actually worth as much money as she spent on it. Like she does not say the words specifically, the mug is not worth that much money, but she does make a big deal about how it's such a small mug and it has two handles so she can't gift it to anyone. She is now making this video saying that I was picking it up. I looked at the price on the bottom. I looked at the price of a few things. She's telling me that she talked me through the price and that she talked me through the whole strawberry collection. This did not happen. Soph says that this story that Shelby said 100% didn't happen. People should take things they hear on the internet with a grain of salt. And even if it did happen, she didn't actually say anything bad in the video and she didn't mention the business's name. And to Soph's credit, she does actually repost the section of the video where she is talking about the mug a few days later. And I will say the video of her talking about the mug doesn't make her look completely blameless or like in the right in this situation. She is like taking a certain tone of voice and obviously expecting that the person who made the mug will not be seeing the video. Especially when you know why the mug has two handles, the way that she's talking about it does feel a lot more disrespectful, implying, who possibly could want a mug with two handles? This is horrible. I wish I'd only gotten one with one handle. There's no reason for anybody to have a mug with two handles. Soph ends the video by saying that Shelby just used her name for views and likes and clout. God bloody shoot me. Like, oh my God. I don't understand why things get blown out of proportion so much and why people think they can just throw my name into things and lie. Because it gets really exhausting when every day there is a new scandal coming up with my name in it just so people can get views. That's my two cents. Do with that what you will. You have a beautiful brand. I never said anything about the pieces not being deserving of that price. All I said was that I was shocked by the price, still paid for it because I was awkward and I wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm not going to get that. Like I was awkward. I still want to support this small business. God forbid that I make a little comment on a TikTok. And very interestingly, all of this is coming out right around when Soph's PJ collection is supposed to drop. Her, the pre-orders for her Valentine's Day PJ collection opened on February 1st, which is right around when Shelby posted that video, months after the fact. Whenever things like this happen, there's always people in the comments that are like, oh, it's just a PR stunt. People are just faking drama for PR. But I have to say, I don't think these people are good enough actors to have faked all of this. And I don't mean just Soph and Shelby, but like, People in general who are influencers don't have the level of like acting chops that it would take to pull off a stunt like that without anybody finding out. And that's not saying it's never happened, but I feel like when you do see something that is clearly a publicity stunt, it comes off pretty like disingenuous and like kind of obvious. So if this was in fact a planned PR stunt, good for them because I'm buying it. So after Soph posts this video where she's defending herself, Shelby then deletes the video that she had made, presumably because the majority of people had switched teams at this point. It seems like Shelby's video when she posted it at first was getting mostly positive reactions. People were going to Soph's page and saying, why did you slam a small business? Why were you lying to harm them? When things like this happen, if people don't have more information, they're very likely to just believe the first person that they hear the story of and then go to the other person's page and start making comments. We've seen this happen all the time in so many things. And this is like what blows the drama up from just like a misunderstanding between two people or a conflict between two people and what escalates it to a public level when you have all these commenters expecting a response. But then after Soph posted her follow-up video, people switched up real quick. Most of the comments on Soph's video now are positive saying like, yeah, girl, 125 for a mug is crazy. So sorry you're going through this, Team Soph, Team Soph. People are also, of course, weighing in, making little TikToks here and there, like, oh my God, I'm so invested in the mug drama. What's going on with the mug drama? What team are you on? What side are you on? Shelby is obviously filtering her comments now, probably with the words like mug, strawberry, so 125, 
because there is not a single comment, positive or negative, on any of the videos that I could find. And Soph still has a ton of comments talking about it, so she is not doing the same thing. Okay, so I do think that this back and forth of like stitching videos and telling their story in little parts is a bit confusing and I at least found it hard to like parse through who is saying what. So to get to the bottom of this, to figure out if we are team Soph or team Shelby, let's see how it went down from each of their perspectives. And nobody wants to hear my attempt at an Australian accent. So I've asked my Australian friend, Jamie of Jamie Creates, to record a little voiceover for me to really fill out this skit. Thank you very much, Jamie. So here's what happened from Shelby's point of view. What a lovely day to sell my wares. Look at all these happy customers. Whoa, Soph. Sofa Dofa from TikTok. Congrats on your TikTok award nomination. Go ahead and look around my booth. All the prices are on the bottom of the cup. Don't feel like you have to buy anything. You can just enjoy my store and my pieces. I know times are tough and things are expensive. I like that strawberry mug. Can you show me? Yeah, so that one is $125. There are also some other pieces in the strawberry collection if you're interested in something different. There's the milkshake mug, which is $140. And then over here is the, nah, I'll take this one. Would you like tissue paper or more padding so the piece is protected? Yeah, that's cool. Thanks, girly. Okay, that will be $125. Go ahead and tap your card whenever you're ready. I just want to say thank you so, so much for supporting my small business. It means so, so much. I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for supporting my small business. It means so, so much. I can't wait to post a TikTok about this business and lie about what a horrible experience I had so that no one ever orders from her ever again. What a rip off. And here's what happened from Soph's point of view. This is so cute. I'll just wait in this line here. Oh, everything looks so nice. I love your long, dark brunette hair. I don't want to take too much of your time and ask too many questions. Oh, that's such a cute mug over there with one handle on the shelf. I'll just get it, whatever. I'll just get it. Yeah, that's all good. You can tap right there. Tap really quick, please. <laughs> no going back now. Ooh, $125? I didn't expect it to be that much for a little mug. It's a little more than I was planning on spending, but it is really cute and it would be super awkward to back out of the sale now that it's all wrapped up. So I guess I'll just get it. And it is like hand serrained. It's like hand serrained. Wait, this thing has two handles. What the fuck? I guess I really should have checked beforehand. Too bad the booth was so busy and I was so stressed about picking a piece. I guess I'll just film a quick little haul with all the things I got. And honestly, I don't really know where understanding their stories gets us. I don't think either of them really has a good reason to lie about what happened. Like, what would their motivation be? What would they possibly have to gain from lying about this pretty inane? Inane, is that a word? Like truly, what would either of them gain from lying about this? Okay, so one of the reasons I think this drama blew up the way it did is because everybody in the comments felt the need to weigh in about their opinion on the price of the mug. This mug was a huge ripoff. This was a big time ripoff. That's not actually that much for a thing. Did you know it's actually only $80 USD if you convert? I think there's two sides to this argument and as an academic exercise, let's argue both of them. One side is the price is too high. This mug does not compare to the market rate of other mugs like this and Shelby is overcharging. The other side is the price is fine. She's a small business, she can charge whatever she wants. And basically if the mug is worth it to someone at that price and they buy it at that price, then it's a fair price. So I'm gonna start with defending the price is too high argument. Something a lot of people have been bringing up is that Shelby uses pottery molds to create her pieces. She doesn't like hand sculpt them, I'm not sure if that's the right word, or throw them on a wheel or anything like that. People seem to be pretty split on whether this counts as handmade or not. I'll talk more about this in a second, but I am inclined to say that if she's making it with her hands, then yes, it is handmade. Small business pricing is really hard. You don't want to undercharge and not be paid for your work and then undercut other people in the field. And you also don't want to overcharge and alienate customers so much that nobody buys your pieces. So I saw a lot of comments of people saying that $125 is a crazy price for a mug. So I went through all of the other pottery ceramic vendors that attended the Finders Keepers Market and found each of their most expensive mugs slash most comparable mugs to the piece that Shelby made. And what I found is that the other pottery at the market all sat in the $40 to $60 range. And I'm gonna show you some of them because they're really cool. So this mug from Authit is $45. They don't have any mugs, but this is just like a really cool tumbler. This mug from Baked Earth, $44. Samantha Robinson, $45. And this one comes with tea. B Bellingham sells this mug for $58. Pinched by Navina, $60. Public Holiday, $60. Air Maid, $60. There were some slight outliers, of course. 
I found this mug from Menem Mug uh, for $88. It has boobs and a bird on it. Then this mug that looks pretty big and has a handle that is shaped like a dog. This is the most expensive one that I could find. This is the Camtot Large Dog Handle Mug for $110. So while I do think small businesses should be able to charge what they charge, if you look at the market rates, Shelby's charging a lot more than other people. And then on the flip side, let's talk about the argument that the price is fine, she can charge what she wants. First, I wanna say, my experience with pottery is that I tried to do like wheel thrown pottery and I managed to create some pretty small kind of messed up looking bowls. I'm really proud about how the bottom of this turned out, but the outside color is not what I thought it was gonna be. So this is all my experience with pottery. The other experience I have with handmade ceramics is as a consumer, I went to an art market in Ann Arbor a while ago and I got this really sick dragon mug that I will not drop. And I like this a lot. It's huge. It fits like a lot of coffee in it. I think I paid $60 for this, which is kind of a lot for a mug, but it's really, it's a really cool mug. And I would rather have one really, really sick mug than a bunch of less cool mugs. I'm one person. I don't need six $10 mugs. I need one $60 mug. Back to Shelby. Regardless of the mugs being created in molds, she still has to purchase supplies, pour the clay, wait for it to dry, fire it, paint it, glaze it, store it. Other related costs include, but are not limited to, possibly renting a studio space or renting a home that has a space she can use as a studio space, paying her employees, paying market booth fees. I found this great TikTok that explains a lot of what I'm thinking here really well. Althea in hell on TikTok says that things are worth what people will pay for them. They talk about how things may have value to you, but other people might look at it and go, that is a crazy amount of money to spend on that. One example for me is a mug. It is worth a lot of money to me to have a really nice mug that I can use every day for my coffee. Another example is yarn. To me, spending money on some fancy yarn every now and then is worth a lot to me, but someone who doesn't knit or crochet might look at that purchase as frivolous. And you can say the same for nearly any other hobby or anything else that people spend money on, like art, electronics, makeup, model railroading, fishing supplies, knitting needles, furniture, you get, you get what I'm saying. Some people like spending a lot of money on pottery or they like spending a lot of money on a product that supports a person that they like. And the biggest argument for the price being fine is that people are buying them at this price. Mugs are not an essential item. She can market them as art and she can sell them at whatever price she wants or needs to make ends meet or God forbid, make some profit on something that she spends her entire life doing. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. The reason that I wanted to argue from both sides is because I think that this is a complicated topic and it's one that comes up all of the time. I'm team Soph, I'm team Shelby. I need to know if we are team Soph or team Shelby. I think I like this the little... <laughs> I'm team everybody relax. At best, these two people are just misrepresenting or misunderstanding an interaction that they had. And at worst, Shelby is clout chasing and instigating. And what's the moral of this story? What can we take away from this? Everybody just seriously needs to relax about things like this. The reason it got this far is because people took parts of a story that they heard, they didn't know what was going on, they didn't have the full context, and they just ran with it and started accusing people left and right of lying, of like doing this on purpose to hurt a small business, this and this and this, when like, I think probably they're both a little wrong and they're both a little right. People are allowed to complain. Like, should Soph have posted that TikTok complaining about the price? Maybe not. Should Shelby have posted that TikTok talking about how Soph was like slandering her business? Maybe not. Should people defend themselves online? Maybe. Should both of them have just not talked about it at all? I don't know, maybe. At the end of the day, these are two people that are on TikTok, but they have full lives completely outside of their presence online. It can be super easy to make snap judgments and decide that someone is a villain and someone is a hero, but in real life, things just aren't that black and white. It'll be interesting to see what happens between these two, but I hope that things just kind of fade into the dark after this. That's all for now. Everybody relax and I'll see you next time. <laughs>